music and uh, shake things up a little bit. So uh, the title of my speech today is Increasing the Awesome. And as you saw by the first video, there's a lot of jobs out there where you're trying to decrease the suck. You're just constantly fighting off uh, negative things. You're, you're um, just trying to keep up with all the issues at hand. And I'm in a lucky position, uh, and a few, uh, several of us in this room are in a lucky position where we get to increase the awesome. Uh, and that's not just working at NASA. I, th I think you should consider the work that you do with wikis as a chance to increase the awesome. Think about the way that you have transformed your organization's opportunity to do different things with the same knowledge that was always there, right? And so the, the goal of my presentation is, is one, just to kind of give you another recap of what NASA has done with MediaWiki, our experience, but also two, to just kind of share some examples of how to celebrate uh, the awesomeness that, that we've achieved and, and encourage you to uh, to take a look back at what you've done within your organization and use that as a motivation for your people. Don't just uh, get stuck in a rut saying, hey, we need to use this wiki, but go back and look at how cool it is and what, what it has afforded you uh, that you didn't have before. Uh, and I'll just clarify that I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the NASA JSC wikis. Of course, we've got, uh, also got Rich from uh, Glenn, and he's, uh, we're, we're now starting to figure out how to work uh, across uh, centers and for the whole agency, um, but I'm just going to speak on behalf of JSC today. Uh, but before before there was awesome, there was definitely uh, a lot of trouble. There was a lot of there was a lot of negativity when we first started things. It, it didn't just happen magically. Uh, when I first started uh, working at NASA, it was the same story as many of you have heard. It was very difficult to find the resources I needed to certify as an astronaut instructor. Uh, you'd go look in a folder and there'd be like three different versions of the same file. And Rev Bravo had an older time stamp, a revision time stamp than Rev Alpha. But then there was also uh, Rev Dave. And so you're like, well, which one do I trust? And many of you have heard the same story. And so I said, well, why don't we use Wiki uh, something like Wikipedia at work? And so my, my uh, immediate boss said, OK, sure, make it happen. Uh, OK, well, but how do I do that? I have no idea. So uh, it took quite a while before uh, all the magic sauce came together. Um, there were times where I was uh, evaluating Confluence. Uh, it was readily available, but it was for a different program. It wasn't for the ISS operations. And so I couldn't really figure out, well, can we really use this? Because it's not in our budget. We're not paying for it. And we don't officially have access to it. And um, so that kind of didn't work out. Uh, eventually, uh, James came along. Unfortunately, he's not here this morning. But he had some more experience than I did on uh, setting up uh, web servers with MySQL and PHP. He had actually built some applications at his previous job. And so he was familiar with the tools that were necessary to run MediaWiki. And just luckily, he also had set up a scheduling tool that we use for our classes at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. And so he had access to a server. That was kind of critical. <laughs> and so kind of on the side, in the corner, he secretly installed MediaWiki, and we started tinkering. Uh, but we kept it real quiet, because we didn't want to get busted. We didn't want to get shut down. Um, it kind of was a Skunk Works thing. And over the course of the year, we just started pumping information in there until finally people started catching wind of it and, and asking us, hey, I want access to that. And all of a sudden, it became the cool thing. right? Um, so eventually, we got, um, we got approval from management. And you know, so it took several years. Uh, but in, in 2011, that's when we started actually uh, officially using a wiki in our workplace. Um, and, and as I said, it took about a year to build up that critical mass. It was, it's really, as Mark was explaining, why we're creating this kind of uh, meta wiki or example wiki to showcase. It's really hard to, to, to explain to people the power of a wiki without showing them examples. And so we had to build those examples before people really got it. Uh, and so it, that took about a year. Um, and we've, we've covered this before. so. Uh, this presentation is linked off of the, um, the schedule for today. So feel free to pull this up uh, later or whatever, and you can get access to all the videos. Uh, so I tried to link some of the prior presentations. 
So uh, in Vienna a few years ago, we, we get, uh, gave a background of the history of how we got started. I, uh, we explained some of the um, examples of, of how we used Semantic Media Wiki. So I won't go into too much detail on our beginnings today, but feel free to watch those later. Um, one of the things that really helped kickstart our usage of, of a wiki was meeting minutes. Um, because that's what every organization does, is they go have meetings and they talk about stuff. But well, why not just feed that into a wiki and link those, those minutes to the, the topics about hardware and, and, and things that you're talking about. And that way, it's just all recorded there. And it, that definitely helped us organically grow more quickly. After about five years, uh, we started having a, a lot of people come up to us and say, we want a wiki. Uh, and so Robo, also, I mean, you, you, you've met a lot of the other uh, NASA people here. Everybody wanted a wiki. And we were just handing them out left and right. We were like, this is great. We're going to have so many wikis. Wikis are great. So. Um, by year five, we had we could actually say we had tens of wikis, and, we, and this was a good thing. We had a lot of people using wikis. Um, I decided to put together a um, kind of a retrospective of uh, just kind of analyzing the usage and the growth of our wikis. Uh, and so linked off of here, um, I took a page that I had originally created on one of our internal wikis, and I got approval to post it publicly. Uh, so now it's on a, a mediawiki.org. Uh, so the page is five-year uh, NASA Wikiversary. And so I'm not going to go through everything on here, but just kind of briefly, um, I, I did a bunch of SQL queries to just kind of analyze, like, OK, how many users do we have? And how, how did that trend over time? This kind of stuff. Uh, so there's lots of little stats in here. Uh, we broke down our uh, articles by, by category to kind of describe uh, what kind of different things are we uh, talking about here. Um, made lots of plots comparing how we started off with just a core set of admins making most of the contributions. And then over time, we had uh, other people besides the admins starting to fill in uh, the contributions. And then eventually, we had people even outside of our organization helping to contribute to our collective knowledge. So it wasn't just the EVA group. It was people outside of the group contributing. Um, so lots of different uh, analytics here. Uh, I won't go into every one of them, but I just had a lot of fun with uh, with R, uh, there's a program called Exploratory, which makes, so it, I'm not for sure if you guys are familiar with R, but it's a, a programming language for statistics. And it's got kind of a steep learning curve, but there's a program called Exploratory, which makes it really easy to just throw some data in there and then uh, spit out some different plots and just kind of tinker with it and find out what you really want to get out of your data. And so a lot of these plots were, were created using Exploratory. Uh, this one here um, I kind of like because, so this is kind of like over time the number of contributors. So you can see like of course when the wiki started there was just uh, James and me and then some other people started contrib contributing and as time goes on you can see that it truly becomes a collaborative effort, right? Everybody's contributing their, uh, their piece of the puzzle. Uh, I talk a little bit about watch analytics. Uh, you, you heard a little bit about that yesterday. And I'll uh, describe that a little bit more uh, in, in a few minutes here. Uh, let's see. There's also kind of um, something else to note is that you know we started off with just the EVA group. And then you know Robo and Oso and some of these other disciplines joined. And when you do it in that fashion, when you do it based on not just the wiki for the whole company, but you start off with a single org, and then you start adding other orgs kind of from the bottom up, you end up with uh, kind of a, a step function every time a new group of people joins. So it might not just be a linear growth uh, scale over time. You might end up seeing kind of step functions as, the, as they join. For example, when Robo joined, they had a SharePoint wiki, and James found a way to just Wikify that. Uh, I think it used Pandoc or something like that. Uh, and that way, they were uh, bootstrapped with the same content they already had, but now with the extra uh, functionality that we have with the wiki, with the media wiki. Um, 
Uh, we did a little comparison between uh, our viewership and contributorship, uh, between uh, comparing us to Wikipedia. And of course, the scales are way different. But the plots were, interestingly, were very similar. The shape of the plots were very similar. So, you know, I'm not going to dig into that, but, you know, it might be interesting to take your uh, um, analytics and compare to other wikis and see how your growth is over time compared to, compared to others. Um, so another thing we looked at, so, you know, there's kind of the 1% rule. So, like, out of, out of everybody, you might uh, consider that um, only uh, a small percentage of your viewers are actually creating content. Um, you might have uh, a small portion of people um, editing content, but then like maybe only 1% of your users are actually creating content, like creating new pages. Uh, so I don't know, do, does anybody actually go in and look at this kind of stuff and see across your organization, are you actually measuring how many of your employees or how many of your workers are, are actually contributing versus just consuming the information. Um, to me, that's kind of one of the biggest differences between uh, the public Wikipedia and a private enterprise wiki is that, you know, the Wikipedia is kind of voluntary. You're not going to get every single person to contribute. I mean, it would be nice, but you're just not going to get there. Whereas in a corporation, you really do need every single person contributing as much as possible but you still end up with this sort of uh, small percentage of people that actually contribute. So it is kind of a problem. Sorry, is that across all the wikis? This is, yes, across all the wikis. Uh, and then, you know, we just did some kind of fun uh, uh, plots to, you know, just look at things differently. So here's a heat map showing um, the, the x-axis is the hour of the day, and then these are the different groups, the different org codes. And so you can see that most everybody works between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, because that's where the contributions are. I mean, that's, I don't think that's very surprising. Uh, but then here's another one where um, we split it out by, by org. So each color is a different org. And then again, we've got the hour of the day, but now it's it's uh, normalized to 100% of the contribution. So, so what we see here is a, is a big red chunk, right? And so what is red? Well, that's HSG, that's Greg's group. And they spend a lot of time over in Russia. So they're not in central time zone. And so they have a disproportionate uh, amount of the contributions at 3 and 4 a.m. central time because they're over in Russia. I mean, I don't know, maybe this is silly, but I think it's kind of cool to explore this and recognize, oh yeah, so that group actually is working over there. They might, you might, their contributions might be masked, masked because they're a smaller group, but when you look at it in the early morning, you better make sure you're not doing maintenance scripts that are going to shut the wiki down, because <coughs> they're, they're using it at that time. Uh, and then finally, um, I made a, an animation uh, to demonstrate the growth of a wiki page we had an EVA that was a very quick turnaround. Uh, we had to get out the door uh, as quick as possible and go fix something. And so we just immediately threw a wiki page out there and just started adding pictures and doing research. And so this, um, this animation is a screenshot of every revision of the page. And it just shows the growth of the page over time. So over here is kind of like the, the zoomed in. And then on the left is, is the full page link because it had so much. It's just you can't show it all on the screen. Um, I just think this kind of shows the power of how simple uh, MediaWiki makes it to, for everybody in a team to throw their information on one page and let's just solve this problem really quickly. And then uh, I'm not going to go through these, um, but there are some testimonials at the bottom of the page. So, uh, you know, maybe later on your own time, uh, take a look at this page, and I just asked all of our users for volunteers to please tell tell us uh, your feedback on you know whether it's positive or negative, whether you hate the wiki or love it, uh, and we got a lot of really good feedback, and uh, it's just really interesting to see the different perspectives of each user because you might not anticipate how each person is using the wiki until you get that 
direct feedback from them. So um, I, I just thought it would be useful to share this. And when we shared it internally, of course, initially, the, after our five-year uh, anniversary, it was, it was also good for other users to see what other, other people were saying about the wiki. Because you might get some people that are like, eh, I don't really like using it. But then once they saw these testimonials, you, know, you could see that it kind of had an impact on them. And they, they thought, oh, OK, I guess I never thought about it that way. Let me go try what that person's doing. Uh, just another plot showing that you know we're still continually growing. We're we're definitely still in the uh, the growth phase. Uh, I suppose eventually we might taper off, but uh, things are still going well even uh, six and a half years later. Um, and as I said, you know we kept adding more and more wikis, uh, but we didn't have a digital strategy. And Mark's chuckling because this is kind of an inside joke, but we didn't really plan this. This just started with the EVA wiki, and then we were, as Oprah showed you earlier, we were just handing out wikis left and right, uh, but we didn't really think about the consequences of that. Um, and all of a sudden, we ended up with a, a whole bunch of wikis, and, and at first we thought this is great, but then we realized, okay, well, if a certain piece of hardware breaks and we need to fix it, well, the OSO group is going to get that hardware ready by changing out the internal components. Uh, and then the EVA group is going to package that thing and take it outside. And then the robotics team is going to provide the robotic arm to get us to the work site. And then once it's installed, uh, you've got the Cronus team that is going to command that box and check it out and make sure that it actually functions. And so you've got multiple groups that have information about the same hardware but it's across different wikis. And so now, all of a sudden, we've got the same problem. We've got multiple silos, possibly with conflicting information. So um, yeah, we, we kind of realized that we, that we were kind of back in the same situation as before, where we had a whole bunch of, where we created new silos, and things were still disconnected. And that's not what we wanted. Um, and so now, something we're working on uh, currently, we had actually hoped to have this finished by the conference and tell you about all of our success, but it's actually a lot harder than you'd think. Uh, Eric has been doing the bulk of the work of trying to merge some of our wikis. Um, so we looked at you know, which wikis can we merge based on access levels. Uh, we have one wiki that is open to basically any NASA employee. And that's mostly just like printer information and how to use your time cards uh, tool and that kind of stuff. Uh, but then the robotics and EVA and OSO is like the internal maintenance. So the, a lot of these wikis had the same uh, permission scheme, basically, uh, that you had to be a NASA employee and you had to be either a US person or a foreign person that has a need to know. Like that's part of your job. So like a Canadian flight controller or a Japanese crew member, they need to know that information. And we realized, well, if they've all got the same permission scheme, let's go ahead and merge those together into just one ISS wiki based on the program. So uh, we're working on that now. It's, it's harder than it sounds. Um, basically, you've got to look at a lot of the templates. Um, when, when Robo and Oso started their wikis, they copied our templates for hardware pages and meetings and that kind of stuff. But then they kind of made their own flair, their own version of it. And so when you merge back, of course, that's going to be, there's going to be conflicts there. And so it's, you might think there's a scripted way to do it, but really it comes down to manually comparing things and figuring out how to conform again. And, and uh, I don't know if uh, we'll have time for a lightning talk for Eric to go into more detail on that. but. Uh, it's been a lot of work. Hopefully, some, hopefully we'll get to report the success at some point. So uh, I, I did want to share briefly, like the, the fact that we're not we're trying to not just be consumers of this awesome technology. Uh, I mean, definitely we're we're using MediaWiki and we're using a lot of extensions, and we're enjoying the the benefits of that. But we're trying to also feed back into the community. So. Uh, one of the ways that we uh, feed back to the community is our participation. We're here, we're trying to share our story, we're trying to help other people out. Uh, we're, you know, if you have a, something you're struggling with, just chat with us and we'll see if we can help, help you figure it out. Uh, we've gone to 
uh, at least one hackathon. Uh, we went to a developer summit and kind of voiced our opinions there. That was in uh, January. Um, we, we've also been growing our number of uh, wiki savvy people. So I mean, it just started off with James and me, and then uh, Scott Ray. He very early on got uh, active in in. Uh, creating a ton of content for our wiki, and then now, as you can see, we've got a lot of a lot of representation here from NASA, and it's uh, it's kind of <laughs> it's a little bit like the Fight Club uh, army. You know, you get this underground army of people that are uh, savvy with the wiki, but I mean, everybody just continues to grow. They level up in how they know how to use templates and properties, and then eventually they start tinkering with extensions. Uh, and so we've got uh, several people now that are developing new extensions, they're developing integrations. Uh, we've got several people that never contributed to Wikipedia before, but now that they're comfortable using MediaWiki at work, they say, oh, um, this is pretty easy, I'm gonna go to Wikipedia. And so now they actually go contribute to articles in Wikipedia. Uh, we even have people that uh, are now donors uh, to the uh, Wikimedia Foundation. So, I mean, I think that's cool. Uh, some of the software that we've created, that we, everything we do, we try to, well, everything except for our custom uh, uh, NASA specific stuff, we try to share publicly. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if, uh, hopefully James will get a chance to share more details about Meza. Uh, you've probably heard rumblings of this. Uh, it's a, um, a set of scripts that we created that uh, tries to simplify the installation and configuration of MediaWiki um, just so that you can keep that standardized and, and keep it as simple as possible. Uh, we've created a lot of custom extensions for what we, what we do at NASA, but then there's several of them we've created that uh, anybody could use. We've modified existing uh, extensions, and we've also integrated things that were already out there at NASA. I think it's, I think it's important to not just try to cram everything into the wiki. I think there's definitely cases where just leave some of these resources where they are because they do a good job of what they do, but tie that into the wiki. Find a way to uh, tie into their API and merge that information into a single uh, search result within the wiki, but, but let that other database keep that, that data as the source. Uh, so I mentioned Meza. Uh, there is an animation here. I won't. I won't show it here, but it kind of. It's kind of a fun way to show uh, kind of the growth of the the project. Uh, it uses uh, Gorse, I think, is the name of the tool. Um, it basically takes a GitHub repo and just shows the timeline progression of all of your commits. Um, just kind of a fun way to go back and, and look at the growth of a project. Um, but just to very briefly describe what Meza is, it's. Uh, a few years ago, um, we had an opportunity where uh, David Meza, uh, one of the uh, people at the Chief Knowledge Officer office at JSC, um, he gave us a couple servers for development. And so in his honor, we named the project Meza, and we later sort of forced the acronym back. Uh, we called it MediaWiki Easy Admin. Um, but the concept uh, started off as a bunch of shell scripts to uh, take a baseline uh, Linux server uh, sent to us um, and install Apache and MySQL, now, now MariaDB, uh, and to install MediaWiki and a suite of extensions and to, and to set it up as a farm if you want to have multiple wikis um, with just a couple commands on the command line. Uh, since then, James has converted it into a set of Ansible scripts, so a little bit more on the technical side there. But the kind of the, the big picture is that if you can get yourself, get your hands on uh, a baseline CentOS uh, virtual machine, and you run just, I think it's like four or five commands, and then wait, you know, 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden you've got a wiki farm. Uh, so it's, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's going to um, help some people out to just get started. Uh, and if you guys want to contribute and participate in the in the project, then you know by all means, please. Uh, as I said, we have uh, we try to integrate with some of the existing resources out there. So we have uh, imagery online. There's a there's a database that has thousands of of pictures. And so why try to upload those in the wiki? You know why not just uh, write a parser function that where you can list out. Uh, the image IDs and then display those in line in the wiki page. Um, several other uh, resources where we um, are able to pull information from another server into 
uh, a wiki page. And then we also started tinkering with, I mean, we call them bots, I'm not sure if that's technically true, but basically like uh, scheduled scripts, uh, cron tasks that uh, go off to a database and then compare that database uh, data to the wiki and copy some of that information over. And, and the reason we did that is that uh, you know, the wiki has a great built-in notification system, whereas a lot of these other resources don't have that, so you kind of have to manually keep up and, and you might not get notified if something changes. So instead, since all of our workflow is in the wiki, if we pull some of that information in nightly, then you're going to get notified automatically when that page changes. And you can use the diff tool within MediaWiki that's already there to uh, easily see what changed. Uh, I'm not sure how many people here use Slack, but you know, it's just another uh, chat program. But we started using, uh, um, we started writing some different scripts that give us kind of um, analytics and, and uh, real-time reporting on our server performance in Slack. And that way, if we're just down the hall and we get a notification on our phone and it says, oh, hey, by the way, uh, Eric just created 5,000 pages, then you know he's probably working on merging the wikis and, and maybe you want to go review that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, taking a, a, a look at how can you get uh, notifications outside of the wiki, you know, whether it's using Slack or IRC or whatever. Uh, just so real briefly, something else I've been working on recently is um, we have a new class of astronauts coming in, and so we have to train them on all the basic skills of, of EVA. And so uh, it's kind of hard to see this, but basically uh, every row is a, is a skill that an astronaut has to learn how to, how to perform when they're doing EVA. And then every column is a class. And so in our wiki, we actually have a wiki page for every lesson plan, for every class that we teach. Uh, and then we also have a page for every skill that they need to learn how to perform. And that way the, the new astronauts can go to those pages and watch videos and, and uh, pick up uh, tips on how to perform those skills properly. And then this page is just a, a matrix that kind of shows us every time that skill has been practiced. And so you can see you know, these, these skills here, they, they see it for the first time and then the second and the third time and then they've seen it more than four times and then you think they probably have it figured out. And it's, uh, I don't know if this is real impressive or not, but it's, it's, um, it's just, a, you know, you can use wiki pages in such weird ways where you just are able to report, you know, a whole lot of information just using a set of queries on a single page. Um, So, <laughs> kind of bluntly though, but does anyone care? You know, we do a lot of this stuff and we, we're, we, we're pretty impressed with ourselves, but kind of taking a step back and thinking about, okay, but does the rest of the community, the rest of the organization, do they actually care? Uh, uh, you know, you heard about um, uh, watch analytics. We've done presentations on watch analytics before, so there's a video there if you want to watch it later. Um, I think Watch Analytics is a great extension. It gives you a lot of insight into the um, activity of your, of your users on whether they're actually keeping up with their watch list and reviewing changes. Uh, it gives you a much simplified and more direct uh, um, feedback on, on what pages have changed. Um, and, and then, of course, the, the diff view, there's nothing new there, but the these links will take you right to the diff, and so it's just a very easy uh, set of directions for the users to go see what has changed. And then it also suggests, you know, which pages need help being watched. So kind of like your, uh, 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 you know, if you've got a bunch of pages that just nobody's paying attention to, it'll it'll say, well, I know that you're watching other uh, hardware pages, so maybe you should watch this hardware page. Um, and you know, as, as Brian talked a little bit, you know, this, is, this tool gives you the opportunity to uh, measure your success on actually reviewing the content as it keeps changing. Uh, so he described this yesterday, but just briefly to, to re-describe it. So the outside here on the outer ring, these orange dots represent people. Uh, the blue dots represent wiki pages. And then the lines indicate people watching wiki pages. And so in here, you know, you would expect 
like this, a lot of wiki pages are being watched by a lot of people. But then out here, you've got pages that are only being watched by a single person, which is a problem, right? So like if I'm watching 100 pages and I go say a bunch of wrong things on those pages and nobody's watching them, then they're not going to correct it. They're not going to catch that uh, incorrect information. Uh, but then uh, the, the plot actually also includes red lines to indicate uh, uh, red indicates when someone has not yet gone and seen that latest revision. And so this was, this was our initial, uh, we, we had that same, as Brian said yesterday, we had that same assumption. We just said, hey, people are watching pages, they're, they're reviewing it, and if it's wrong, they'll go fix it. And we just thought, hey, this is great. And then we, when James created this extension and, and we actually saw what was going on, we realized, oh, wow, they're, they're, they're not, they're not. <laughs> Uh, this is, not only are people not reviewing pages, but what the heck's going on here, you know? Um, <coughs> so, um, once we started vocalizing this to our management, for a brief moment, they were uh, really responsive. And they said, all right, people go out there and do your reviews. And, and as you can see, our status got a lot better. Um, Briefly, this is current. This is our, I took this uh, a few weeks ago. So I think we're kind of back into a bad situation. Uh, and so that's kind of why I put that slide, that, that page in there, does anybody care? You know, it, initially people said, oh, this is great, we need to take care of this. But then it just quickly became forgotten. And we try to raise this up with our management periodically, but you know, everybody's busy and yeah, we'll get to that eventually. But I mean, how important is it to you and your organization to have your your documentation current and correct? I mean, to me, it just it seems like that's so important. But I, I don't know how to better convey this. I don't know I don't know what we're doing wrong. I, uh, so approved revs. Uh, your own uh, des described this yesterday. Uh, we use this a little bit. Uh, we try to to only use it where absolutely necessary. So like lesson plans and some of our console handbook pages that people think are super critical, uh, we put this extra layer of protection where it has to be approved before that revision will be viewed by everybody. Uh, so we do make use of this. But when you do that, you add a layer of bureaucracy. You add a bottleneck. Uh, so I created this little script that Every week, right before our weekly group meeting, it goes off and it checks all of the pages that use approved revs, and it sees if there is a if there's a revision that has not yet been approved. So, so basically, that means that whoever owns that page needs to go review it and either approve it or fix it, and then you know approve their revision. And so, it spits out the the date of the when that revision was made, and then the link to the page, and then if if possible, it lists like who the owners are. If it doesn't have the owners, then it's just the, the management team. And at first, the you know it was kind of nice because it spit out this list every week, and I thought maybe we would address it. But then uh, I started noticing that at the bottom it was truncating in the middle of a page name, and I thought, oh man, I got a bug in my script. But then I just realized I was exceeding the limit of a string of whatever the data type was for passing all this data through in one, in one uh, value. So our list was so long, it was running out of room, uh, running out of memory in that, for that data type. And so you know, I said to management, like, hey, our list is so long, it's breaking the script. Come on. You know, I mean, the oldest one is 2013. It seems like we should address that. But you know, these things, they just kind of linger. And, I don't know, I'm, I'm not in a position of management, I'm just in a position of providing data and trying to encourage uh, the group to do better with their knowledge with these analytics. But I don't know, it's kind of weird being in a powerless position where you say, hey, we've got these problems, we should fix them, but then where does it go? And so we've got a ton of other ways. I mean, there's so much data if you go into the the, the tables of MediaWiki and you start analyzing all the different things back there. Uh, along with watch analytics, uh, you get page scores. Uh, Brian touched on this yesterday. Uh, but we don't really use it in our group, but it's there. It's, 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 a, it's an opportunity to, to take another look at how well are we managing our information. But we just don't use it. Um, 
You can even look at the timeliness of reviewers, like how quickly do they go check their pending reviews. But I don't think anybody really goes and reviews this. Uh, I even started tinkering with some gamification stuff. Uh, I made some plots to kind of show like compare that so every color is a different person and this is over time showing their contributions. And so, you know, you don't necessarily want to say the most page revisions is the winner, but you definitely want to see like is is everybody kind of continually contributing to the to the to the wiki. Um, but yeah, I mean it we have all this information out there, but it, I don't know if it's not being used, then maybe what's the point? I don't know. It's just kind of frustrating, I guess, is my so, uh, you know, how can we motivate our group to, to make use of this information? How can, we, how can we motivate our group to, you know, make more use of the wiki and instead of just letting it sit there and stagnate? Uh, so we did one docathon, which is where our management said, all right, no classes, no, no uh, astronaut activities today. We're just all going into a corner and we're going to work on the wiki and we're going to split up into groups and each work on these pages. And it was great. I mean, I think we got a lot done that day. We worked on our lesson plans. We got a lot of uh, kind of the grunt work that nobody wants to finish. We actually got that done that day. But then that was just one day. And that was two years ago, I think. So I don't know. Why aren't we doing more of these? Uh, every week in our group, uh, in our group meeting, uh, we do what we call a wiki quickie. Uh, it's just a, limited to five minutes. Does anybody have a question on how something works? okay, let me answer that real briefly and then we can talk more later. Or, hey, we have this new feature. I just want everybody to know about this. Uh, I think that kind of helps to get people's attention. But, uh, and then I mentioned gamification. Um, several years ago uh, in St. Louis, I gave a presentation about how I, I was really excited about you know, adding gamification to MediaWiki. And you know, it's easy to just throw some points in there. Like everybody gets a point for editing a page or or everybody gets uh, you know, a point for thanking someone using the echo and thanks extension. But then you can easily game the system. And, and what are you really trying to reward? You don't want to just reward page revisions. You want to reward quality of content. And that's a much harder thing to measure. Uh, so I mean, I, I, I tinkered with showing, uh, you know, this is a, a plot showing over time different people and, and, and how many contributions they're making. Uh, this is, uh, I, tr I tried looking at, so um, this is for me, this was like the, in 2013, these were the top 10 pages that I edited. So like, I guess my to-do list, I edited 126 times. I guess I used that quite a bit that year. Uh, but then categories of pages that I edited the most. And I don't know, I, I, so I, this was out there for everybody to be able to go look at their own information and see like, well, what, what did you, spend most of your time in this year uh, doing. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's useful. Uh, it's a little bit less on the point system. It's a little bit more on kind of introspective, kind of learning more about your, your workflow. Um, I tried putting together like a little bit of a story, like you're a hero. Uh, over the past 1,605 days, Darren has made 13,000 revisions to 3,967 pages. Uh, you know, if let's estimate that uh, if it just saved one person five minutes every time he did that, then he has a time savings of 330 hours. I don't know. Is that motivational to some people? Maybe. Uh, but that's the trick, is trying to figure out, like, some people are competitive and they want those points, but that's probably only 10 or 15% of your group. Like, what, what actually motivates everybody else? Uh, some people are kind of social uh, animals. They want to they wanna pair up with other people and work on the same thing. So I thought maybe... Uh, maybe if we look at the categories of pages that I edited and then find other people that edited a lot of the pages within that category. Maybe we can be friend wiki friends and edit the same pages. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that that would necessarily motivate me, but it might motivate some other people. Uh, and so I'm kind of just sharing all this, just kind of, I don't know, if you have ideas later and you want to pitch some ideas and if you think your users would actually be motivated motivated by any of these different aspects. Let me know because I I've really hesitated to like actually release an extension and and put it in use because I don't want to do it the wrong way. I don't want to ruin the wiki and turn it into a a system where you're just doing it to get points. Like I want it 
the whole point of the gamification is to get people to, to participate and make the wiki better. Um, so just a couple of final things here. This is another plot from that I, you know, I like looking at the, the time. Uh, this is from the beginning of the wiki to, I think this might be like maybe a year ago that I made this plot. But it's, you know, here's just the number of contributions and every color is a person. So you can see over time it, it generally goes up. This is that same one where it's like normalized to 100%. So, you know, here we are at the beginning of the wiki and one person and then two people and three people were contributing. And then here at the end, you've got hundreds of people editing. Uh, and I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool to share these things with your users and show them uh, show them the power of, of what they're working on. So again, here's the animation from before. So if you want to take a look at that, it's in the presentation. And then I've added some links to some other videos. We've got a lot of different uh, presentations already out there on YouTube, and I just tried to consolidate all of them and link them from this, this single presentation. So uh, that's it. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, we've got microphones, right? Turn it on when you're ready. Go, go ahead. Uh, I, I was wondering what your sort of bottom line is, because I, I'm, I'm seeing the, the activity measurement, your, your graphs uh, and, and the various things of what the activity is. Do you have any bottom level, it, it, it appeared that your objective was an educational one, uh, from what I could tell. In other words, you were looking at skill development at, at one point and therefore using the wiki as a support tool for education, uh, as opposed to a factory call, you know, that, that you go to something to go and find what is the, you know, sp a specific fact or, or specific information that you're looking for. Do you have any f bottom line, if you, you're going to upper level, upper level leadership, and you're going to say, what's the effect of all this on your education program is it, is it improving the quality of the education or the efficiency of the training process? Do you have any bottom line feel or, or how you could get to that bottom line? So I, I think I understand your question. And so I'm going to, I, I kind of skipped over this because I realized I was running long. But uh, this, this plot I, I showed you earlier, um, the way it works is that, so here, here's an example of, so an NBL run, when we do a training run at the NBL, we will perform several objectives. And here is just one objective, and that objective is to practice APFR. APFR is a foot restraint. It holds their feet steady while they do work. And so you have to practice getting your feet into that tool. And so you know, for 30 minutes, we might practice that skill. And so there is a lesson plan wiki page that has all of these objectives, and it has lots of semantic properties. And then on another page, there is a page that describes here are the steps to get into that foot restraint. So this tells an astronaut, this is what you need to do to succeed. Eventually, we'll have videos and other resources, but that's kind of like, that tells you how to do it. So there, there's definitely a lot of content in the wiki that is educational, that, that uh, is your standard kind of encyclopedic uh, material. But then the point of this was more, the wiki can be more than just encyclopedic. This is more of a reporting tool. So what this did is it helped us figure out, hey, look at this skill. We're only training it twice in their entire training flow. Is that enough? Do we need to add it? Like we, we, might, not have mi we might have missed that had we not had this reporting tool. Whereas we can easily see, so like this one, oh man, we train it pretty much every class. We're good to go. So, so it, it's sort of looking, you're, you're getting towards the human resource issue of people and skills and their training and the whole management of that. Uh, but, uh, but I'm thinking, what's the bottom line of this? It's obviously got to be something that's, that's being done better than the, pr than the alternate mechanisms. I don't know if this helps answer, but the way I saw this, the bottom line was the previous groups of astronauts we've trained three or four years later, we determined we're not what we expected in a skill level. But we had no data to show that. So the bottom line of creating this on the wiki was we actually now have data we can show our management and say we can analytically show what, how we're training and eventually increase that to, to benefit it. So 
we use the wiki in many, many cases, but the bottom line for this specific skill, I think that was kind of the bottom line of how do we get more proficient students and, and show that we are doing that with the data we have. Well, it, it identifies it identifies gaps in our in our training in our in our data set. Uh, okay, so you want to pass the mic back to her, and then you're on. I think you're next. Oh, uh, oh. yeah, just briefly. I think uh, there's someone uh, in a previous talk who said that um, you know uh, wiki activity was integrated into performance. Reviews. I don't remember. I think it's, it's the, it was Brian, someone. right? Uh, oh, okay. yeah. Okay, right, right. I don't know if that's an option for you guys. It seems like that, you know. I, I mean, if I was a manager, absolutely. Right. right. <laughs> but I'm not. You know. Yeah. So I, I'm just this guy that uh, you know trains astronauts and and builds the wiki and and uh, I, I try to I try to provide this information to management and say here, look what everybody is doing. Um, and I, I think to a, to a certain extent they do look at it, but I don't know. I, I guess they're not, they don't, because there's a lot more to our job that's not necessarily tied to the wiki, right? Like th that's not everything we do. So I don't know. Yes? So my question builds on uh, the first question. So you're building org capability here. And, and my question is, can you tie what you've done on the wiki to a cost savings? Because if, you're, if you are sending all these people out for training, but now they can do it on the wiki, um, you know, there, there must be a cost savings that management would pay attention to. And if you could take that to them, they could help you um, socialize, market the wiki, you know, put, it, put other training on there to build OC. Uh, definitely, I, I, I think I agree with what you're saying. I, I don't know how you exactly formulate the, the quantification of that, though. Like, well, uh, so for example, this is what we're doing in our company. I'm going to put um, oilful essentials on our wiki. Okay, so for each person that takes that class, it cost, let's say, it cost about a thousand dollars. Okay, but if I can have a class of twelve go through each quarter then I'm saving my company money. And I, I think that's what management pays attention to, is what, you know, what is that return? And, and, and you do wonderful graphics, and, and you know, graphics tell the story. You know, that's the narrative. So I, I think maybe, um, I mean, it's something to consider. So is, do we have a microphone for James? Because I, I think yeah, I know what he's going to say, so. Uh. Oh, yeah, I was just going to comment. One, one area, especially in training, uh, especially in this job where it can take three years to get somebody certified, uh, and they're basically either non-value added in the beginning and then it's a slow ramp up as the percentage of work that they're doing, they're just building, building training time, non-value added training time versus, and then their, their percentage of contributions start to build, and then they're certified, and let's say they're 100% contributing. Uh, one of the concepts that's been getting some traction is just-in-time training. So it's especially with astronauts, but it's also with flight controllers and other people, is the idea that you get this class one year, but you don't use that skill until you launch a year later. And so you have to find out which pieces of training have attrited by then, what they actually need to get refreshed on. Uh, and then also, especially from a flight controller training per perspective, so much of the old system was learning how to look things up learning which dusty bookshelf has the technical manual that you need. And so when we, we'd be examining uh, and, and doing evals on these, these trainees, sometimes we would say, no, you don't need to memorize that. You just need to know how to find it. But now, as things are moving to the wiki, how to find it is just typing in the search box. Sure. And so it's really interesting seeing how much of that entire training flow has been eliminated where, it, OK, you can look it up instantly. Sure, the, the time savings, I mean, that. Yeah. That's got, you know, how much of the year an hour and then versus looking things up. And the thing is the metrics were never tracking how long it was taking for people to <laughs> find that dusty old bookshelf. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and but, it, but, yeah. but even if you could exactly. sort of generalize, you know, and, and even, yeah, yeah you, you could show them, you know, that value. And I think that uh, you could get more buy-in. James, did you have a response to her or was yeah. it separate? Um, so, 
we have kind of standard training flows, different um, different levels of certification. It's, it's different for each group, but for our group specifically, it's about a year after you start, you get you get your certification in in our instructor flow. Um, <coughs> And it would be really great if we could say, oh, by use of the wiki, we have reduced to that down to six months, because then we could go to our management and say, you know, number of new employees times six months times average pay, this is what it's worth. But unfortunately, it's not that, <laughs> that straightforward. Um, um, and I have no data to back this up, but my general feel um, is that, that our training flows are not any shorter. They may actually even be a little bit longer, but I think that our certification level is actually a lot harder now. Like I think because it's so much easier to find all of the information, now when, when instructors go in that are certifying people, they have a wealth of information that they just didn't really have access to before, and it's like, well now I expect you to know this too, which you weren't really even required, required to before, um, just because our entire corpus of knowledge is so readily available. We kind of expect new people to know more of it than we did before. The other, the other um, element of savings, it's, it's tangentially related to, saving, to, to training, but it, when it came to updating documents, what was interesting in my group is that using the old paper system in which you had the, uh, we call it serial signature process. So you have all these people review the latest revision to the, the handbook, uh, and they would all be collected into this one rev, and then this technical expert had to sign off of it, and this was the second signature, and then group lead, and it just goes up uh, for signatures. They had a system of tracking that, so you could see it was taking on the order of a year or longer to get the next rev to the document published. And so just by switching to wiki, um, not only not having that linear signature process sped up publishing new information on a paragraph level, but if somebody wasn't doing their reviews and wasn't doing their signatures, the rest of the team was sort of moving, over, like, what, like water flowing around yeah. the bottleneck. So, so my, yeah. my next question is, is, do you have lean signal p trained people in NASA that you could leverage? Because you know, they're trained to, to help do these small measurements, you know, redu reduction of cycle time, because that's what I'm hearing from you. And, and actually, they can help you with those metrics. I mean, I, we use them all the time in, in our company. And, um, you know, you just, a, a quick meeting, you tell them what you want, and then they come in, another quick meeting, and then they, because they, they're trained, and they do all the metrics and stuff, and then you talk about them, and then you normalize them you get, at least you get a baseline of where you are. And if you've, you've had the wiki for six years, six, seven years, so to me it's, it's a success. It's just fine tuning it and getting, you know, sort of that monetary number that people are looking for. Yeah, I would love to have uh, anything monetary out of this. 